Hey everyone, Cynix here. Today's video is all about building good health habits for your longevity as an artist. I'm not going to waste your time with any nonsense at the start, but I do want to give one big disclaimer. I am not the pinnacle of health. In fact, I've never been a good example of health. You might think, then why should I take your health advice? Well, I would argue that my precarious health makes me much more adept at noticing the lasting effects on your body that minor habits might cause. Some people are healthy enough to bounce back from everything, but if I do anything improperly, this whole shaky house of cards that I call a body will come crashing down. So with that in mind, I'm going to give you my best health tips for artists, covering all aspects of the body piece by piece. Starting with the eyes. Eyes are obviously one of your most important tools. You might be able to draw with your feet, but you'll never be able to see with your nose. I'm going to be avoiding the most common tips that are universal to everyone and really just hyper-focus on things that are relevant to artists. So, speaking of that hyper-focusing, the biggest mistake you can make is focusing at one set distance for long periods of time. This heavily strains and weakens your eyes. The best habit to build is constant squinting. Every time you put down some colors or lines, get in the habit of unfocusing your eyes and squinting at the screen. Not only is this great for your eye health, but it's the most effective way to constantly stay aware of the values in your art. It also kind of serves as a soft reset that keeps you from focusing in too much on one part of a drawing or painting, and really lets you maintain a good grasp on the overall picture. This actually leads us to our next piece of anatomy, the neck muscles. Like with the eyes, it's important that you not lock any part of your body in a set position for too long. Your neck can easily become the greatest trouble spot for this. I know I might look silly while doing it, but constantly tilting my head to analyze the art I'm doing is extremely helpful in preventing neck strain. And once again, the huge added benefit is that it works in tandem with your eyes to soft reset your outlook on your art that you're working on. Constantly trying to step your brain back and see the big picture of an image at all steps is a massive advantage. So developing a physical habit that can assist you with that is great, especially if it has all these other benefits. But let's take these neck pains a bit further and talk about the spine as a whole. I'm sure you all know the importance of posture and sitting up straight. I've learned the hard way and am still working on my terrible posture, but for now, let's talk about your choice of tablet, actually. One of the most important things that I accidentally did for my health was never getting a display tablet. Now, you can have a very healthy relationship with a screen tablet, but you need to be extremely mindful of the positioning of it. There are few things worse for your spinal health than constantly looking downwards. The great thing about non-display tablets is that you will absolutely never look down at it while drawing. Also, they're incredibly cheap. For the record, I'm still using the same $60 Cartoon Animal XP Pen tablet for everything you've seen me do for the past two years. XP Pen or Huion are both great choices, and Up and Comer Zense Labs is also making great quality products. I really don't recommend taking the display tablet route unless you're ready to commit fully to a nice adjustable arm stand for it. As much as I love drawing on my iPad, it can be terrible on your body. Let's move into the more niche side of things and talk about hand health. Artists demand a lot from your hands and wrists, and I see a lot of people building really bad habits when it comes to these things. There are two huge factors that can greatly harm your overall hand-wrist health. The first one is gripping your pencil or stylus too tight. The added tension this places on your tendons can be very damaging. Try to always find a grip that just barely applies enough pressure to keep the pen from falling out of your hands. Avoid pens and pencils that are too thin as this requires a tighter grip. Also, avoid tools that are too slippery. The older Apple Pencil is probably the worst offender, completely slippery and narrow. 
Luckily, you can adjust this and add extra wide grips to your tools. The more texture it has, the less tightly you will have to hold it. Once again, the ideal grip strength should be right on the edge of it just falling out of your hand. The other factor in wrist health is actually software related. Always set your tablet and brush sensitivity to be extremely on the sensitive side. Your most comfortable mid-tier stroke should be enough to bring a brush to its full pressure settings. If you find yourself even pressing in just a little bit to get full opacity, you're going to damage your wrist health. Your stylus should feel more like a brush pen, constantly trying to feather it against the surface with the lightest touch in order to get the desired results. Speaking of which, if you find yourself to be overly heavy-handed with traditional drawing, Buying a brush pen and using it for sketching is the ultimate way to improve your control. Alright, let's move down to the legs. This one is more like generic advice than the rest of these, but as artists, you're definitely spending a lot of time sitting down. The major effect this has on the body is the overall tightening of your hamstrings. Hamstrings play a huge role in your overall biomechanics. And when your hamstrings are overly tight, it can have a huge effect on how your body handles regular activities. Most notably, tight hamstrings will absolutely destroy your knees. If you ever feel excess pain in your knees while walking or sitting and standing or picking stuff up, this is a huge red flag that your hamstrings are too tight from constant sitting. The best thing you can do is stand up once in a while and fully stretch your hamstrings by touching the ground. This is actually a great chance to kill two birds with one stone. While you're in this fully stretched position, try doing a proper body weight squat. Now, I don't really recommend trying this, but you can also notice the difference between squatting with fully stretched hamstrings and squatting with tightened hamstrings. You'll probably notice how much extra strain this puts on your knees. The massive benefit of doing this simple exercise is that it works out your quad muscles, which are absolutely the biggest muscles in your entire body. By exercising these giant muscles, you will get the most bang for your buck in terms of overall workout in the shortest amount of time. This is the most time effective exercise for your overall health, and getting that quick large amount of exercise is great for maintaining a healthy hormonal and chemical balance in your body. Which brings us to our final stop on this journey, the brain. Personally, I loathe the words mental health. Not because of the concept behind it, but because the word mental sounds abstract and immaterial. Your brain is by far the most complex and finely tuned physical component of the body. Even using the words I feel can be misleading for a lot of people. The word feelings also suffers from that illusion of sounding abstract and immaterial. If you tell someone you feel anxious, the suggestions you get back might consist of telling you to simply calm down. This is equivalent to telling someone with their hand in a fire to simply stop feeling pain. Consider mental health as neurochemical health. For some people, referring to a mental health issue as a neurochemical injury can at least help them understand the very real physical nature of things. This field of neurochemical health is far too vast for me to give you any single amazing cure, but I can at least give you a couple pieces of advice. First, remember that a lot of these neurochemical afflictions can be compared to other ailments like a sprained ankle. It will hurt for a while no matter what, but it will heal with time as long as you treat it properly. Don't just fight the pain and run around on your sprained ankle causing more and more damage. Let it heal properly. Secondly, and this one is very hard to grasp, but try to understand that neurochemical injuries, by their very nature, affect your entire concept of consciousness and self-awareness. What does this mean? It means you cannot, by definition, comprehend or imagine the different states of neurochemical balance. A depressed person does not have some unaffected side of their psyche where they can process any sense of what it is even like to be happy. Everything is recontextualized through the neurochemicals that are currently in your brain, 
This works both ways. A happy person cannot contextualize existence in a way that goes outside of their current neurochemistry. This is by far the most dangerous aspect of these topics. Even if you yourself suffered through some horrible neurochemical injury, your ability to even contextualize it properly once it's cured is completely impossible. You will even have an absolutely easy time downplaying it in hindsight, even if you just got over it. This is why society as a whole has trouble confronting mental health issues as anything other than abstract nonsense. Meanwhile, if you're going through a neurochemical issue, the ability for you to contextualize any sense of the world where you feel happy is completely gone. You can even downplay the concept that happiness even exists or that you've ever experienced it or will ever experience it. So my grand advice is this, just be aware of that fact. That's it. Just be aware that your brain simply can't contextualize an existence other than the one it's currently in. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. In fact, we know it exists. No matter what you think you feel, you have been happy in the past and you can be happy in the future. Just manage this injury one step at a time. All right, that's everything. I don't think there is much else to say. I've wanted to make this video for a while because I've constantly referenced some of these health tips at various times, but now they can all be stored in one simple place. I hope this was helpful and I'm proud of anyone that watched this. Big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, of course, and I will see you all again soon. <laughs>